Hey everybody, welcome to Average Guy Opinions. I'm your average guy, John Corelli. Uh, this is episode 65, I'm pretty sure, and my hair is starting to look like Conan O'Brien's. It's getting pretty high. <laughs> um, let's talk about Dr. Seuss. Uh, let's talk about the uh, and cancel culture and uh, some uh, some other things, including a book I'm uh, my second book that I'm working on, which is far from p politically correct. So we'll get there. Um, okay, so I, I finally got to the root of the story about Dr. Seuss and the and the six books that were that their publishing house will not publish anymore. Um, here's the thing. All right. Everyone, especially the Republicans, are jumping on this cancel culture bullshit. Um, you really, it's really difficult to cancel somebody unless everybody hates them. Not everybody hates Dr. Seuss. Um, I actually thought I had a Dr. Seuss book in the house. I cannot find one, but uh, one of our favorites when, I, when uh, my ex-wife and I are raising our kids uh, was Oh Baby, The Places You'll Go. That was a good one. Um, I have read uh, to, to Children... Um, especially at the uh, elementary level, but even at the high school level, because some of the kids uh, at, high, at the high school level of the special needs department don't, you know, they don't progress the way they're supposed to. That's why they're special needs. So often those kids love those childlike books. I um, just, I, I think I read uh, Go Dog Go just last month to a kid that really loved that book. Uh, he has severe, severe autism and was just, that was his... That's often his way of coping, is, is that the repetitive nature, especially of a Dr. Seuss book, as you guys probably know. Um, so I have nothing bad to say about Dr. Seuss. There are some, there's definitely evidence that he was maybe not the most politically correct guy in his time. You got to remember, the man was born in 1904. Um, he lived until 1991. He died at age either 86 or 87. Sorry, this pillow's under my ass and it's driving me crazy. Um, so. You know, the guy was born in the 20s. Uh, they say he was a, possibly a no Nazi sympathizer, which obviously is not great. Um, you look at the pictures in the books that were banned. Um, I've actually read a couple of them uh, recently. I've read, uh, I, I saw it on Mulberry Street. And there are, uh, there are some images in these books that are like, eh, probably not that great. Asian people, very yellow, um, stuff like that. Um, basically not very respectful of other cultures. Uh, we got to look at this. Hey, some of this stuff was written nearly a hundred years ago. People didn't give a shit about other cultures, especially white people, because they were basically running the world. So, you know, he was just trying to write children's books for children, which many of them are so inclusive, by the way. We know this about Dr. Seuss. Uh, the problem I have is the Republicans grasping onto this. It's pathetic. They're literally having filibusters in Congress reading these books. or not a filibuster, but basically, oh, I'm going to read this book. Get over it. Get over it. And I want to go back to cancel culture and how almost impossible it is. If, uh, if these people decide not to publish these six books out of, I don't know how many, he did he read, write a hundred? It was a bunch. He wrote a shitload of books. But if if they decide, hey, we don't think these are politically correct, there are some school districts that have complained, and not, maybe not complained to us, but said, hey, we don't think these are uh, very progressive books, especially for our minority students. What's the big deal? If you really want that book that bad, go find it on eBay. I'm quite sure you can find it. Um, I'm sure that you can go to your second-hand bookstore. By the way, Republicans, feel free to... Uh, Support those guys because they're getting crushed during COVID. They're not getting the stimulus money. Some some small businesses are, um, but yeah. So just shut up. You sound stupid. Um, when it comes to banning books, I don't think any books should be banned. Uh, I really don't. No matter what is said in them, and I don't think they should be censored either. If uh, if the N words in a book that Mark Twain wrote 150 years ago, um, don't read it. <laughs> okay. Um, if if you don't want to see the fact that this was an ugly country 150 years ago, still is an ugly country in many ways, then don't read the books where those words might be said. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't like any art being censored. You don't like uh, don't like the um, uh, what's her name? <laughs> Jesus. I'm, this shows how not religious I am. But uh, you don't want to see uh, um, Mary Magdalene smeared in feces. Don't go to an art museum, maybe. Or at least avoid the exhibit, because that happened years ago. People got mad, and, you know, there are some places where there are bad choices made. For example, there was, I think it was in, the, in Boulder, there was a, a women's movement, 
or an LGBTQ movement uh, or exhibit where they hung dildos to the entrance of the library. Come on. <laughs> well, really? Yeah, you want to do an art museum where there are adults that will, will be there. But libraries, come on, they're for kids. And uh, it shouldn't be out in the middle of as you enter. Oh, mom, what's that? That's a conversation that mother should not have to have upon entering a library. Now, if you're going to choose to walk with your child down Colfax and maybe walk across kitties or something like that, or very intimate pleasures or whatever the stores are now, eh, you might, uh, that might have been a conversation that was foisted upon you and partially was maybe your fault for walking by kitties. Not that, I mean, and then we're going to do a new thing. Uh, who, you know, if you don't have a choice, if you're so poor, you have to get on that bus and you have to walk by that kitties and you have to take your child's hand and get that kid to school or wherever you have to get that child because you don't own a car and you have to live near Colfax because that's where the rent's low. Well, then maybe that conversation's been foisted upon you and that wasn't your choice as well. Um, you know, it's easy to say, well, you should live a different place. That's easy for me to say because I have some money. Not a lot, but <laughs> I'm lucky enough. Actually, I live with my parents. Who, who the hell am I to talk about anything right now? I do pay rent. Remember that. <laughs> I'm very adamant about that. They wanted me here. I've talked about that before. Anyway, so um, there's so many things that this uh, type of action can uh, start a discussion about. So many angles you can go at it. Um, like I say, I don't think any book should be banned or censored or, or altered in any way. Um, if, if we don't think the kids of today can handle uh, stories like by Mark Twain or uh, George Orwell, or then then that's why we elect school, school boards and uh, and have them perhaps say, okay, we're not going to censor this book, but we're going to say this book should not be for kids under fourteen. We're only going to have the, these books available in our school district at, at the high school level. If our parent if our parents want to go to a library or go to a bookstore and buy this book and introduce their kid to that book at, at, at two years old. That's their choice as a parent. I think it's very simple. It really, it really is. I mean, I don't, as much as I'm a liberal and a leftist, I do not like the idea of government getting into this stuff. But let's go back. This was not a governmental decision. This was the decision of a publishing house that may have been influenced by some school districts saying some stuff, but that was their choice. You don't like their choice, maybe talk to them about it, but don't, I mean, God, Congress, you got stuff to do. I'm waiting on a stimulus check. I would like that. I know a lot of people that are worse off than me would, could use that. Instead of reading Dr. Seuss and, and bitching about cancel culture. And, and there's another thing. You're the ones that called us snowflakes all the time, calling the liberals and the leftists snowflakes. Why are you crying? Stop crying. <laughs> crying over a Dr. Seuss book like you were reading to your kids in the first place. You were indoctrinating them. Shut up. This goes to my book. Um, I'm going to start working on it again tomorrow. It's very, it's at, the, it's at a skeleton level right now. I'm just building the foundation. If, if, if this were a house, I'm just putting down the cement and starting the two by four process. Had it in my head a long time. Um, and I've mentioned it before. I've mentioned this person before, um, early on, uh, probably back in God episode 20 or something, but my friend, uh, who was half black and, uh, was a skinhead, uh, became a skinhead in his young adulthood. Um, I'm doing a, I was going to do it as a, uh, as a graphic novel. I thought that would have been very effective, but instead I'm going novel and then maybe I'll adapt it. I don't have a lot of time anyway. I am so busy. I am so worn out. I, I know. Look at this. Look at the bags under the eyes. I'm so goddamn worn out. <laughs> I'm just tired. I, 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 you know, I got, I got two kids here I'm raising. Luckily they're pretty much raised. I've got, um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I've got a job. I've got a job that could be very stressful. Um, I, I'm kind of helping my dad towards his death, unfortunately. You know, took him for his cancer treatment just a couple days ago. Uh, we'll see how he does, but he's not going to live forever, and, he, and he's certainly not in good shape. So, you know, I'm just fucking tired. Uh, but th I am psyched to, to start new... I was up late last night doing comedy, because I do my comedy show every week. I just... I'm a busybody... But I am worn out. And then my parents' goddamn dog, who howls whenever they leave, they go for a walk at 7 in the morning. I never get to sleep in. I, was, I, I went to sleep all the way till 8 o'clock, and I didn't get to do it because fucking dog just yowling at like 7 in the morning. Anyway, that's enough bitching. 
uh, look forward to my book sometime if I get it published. I'm, I'm hoping my goal is maybe the end of the year if things go well. Um, it's going to be called The Adventures of Mike McMath. 